Today on Play and Display, we'll be reviewing McFarlane Toys DC Universe Static Shock. If you guys clicked on this video, I'm pretty sure you guys know who Static Shock is. If you guys don't know who he is, I'll give you a quick overview. Uh, first release in, I want to say June of 1993, Static Number 1 was the first appearance of Static Shock. Uh, it was published by Milestone Media, which was... Uh, part of DC in a certain way, uh, they would actually publish and distribute uh, their books through DC. Uh, he was very popular enough to get his own TV or anime show, I want to say, in 2000, which is freaking one of the best anime shows ever on, ever, is for as far as DC is concerned, though. Um, so, I've been wanting to get a figure for a long time, but the problem is, there's hardly any Static Shock figures, though. They're super expensive, like these right here, just sold on eBay not that long ago, and I just, I don't have the money for that. But this version right here is a new 52 version, which didn't see a whole lot of comic release, but it is still 4-Ball and still Static Shock. So, let's see if it lives up to the hype. And the packaging is just your standard McFarlane Toys multiverse figure. Nothing really too different, though. I wish they would put some side art right here, though, but on the back of the box, though, they do an excellent job giving you, like, a portrait of who this uh, character is. Now, you didn't know who Static Shock was when you were looking through that. I was trying to figure out what's a superpower. You think it's electricity, but it's actually more than that, though. He's actually got magnetism. I'll get into that here in just a little bit. McFarlane Toys is trying to recreate that new 52 look for Static Shock. And for the most part, they do a lot of good on here, though. The trench coat looks really good. I'm not a big fan of capes or trench coats, especially from McFarlane Toys. I figure most of the time when they kind of have like a prefix position like this one right here, where it's kind of just waving in the wind, doesn't look right. But on the back of the coat, though, look at the detail on that, though. You see some texture right here, so that... Really gets bonus points for me, though, I think, as far as realism goes. Uh, the colors for the costume look really decent, too, as well. They uh, have that bright, vibrant pop to it. My only really big concern and my only complaint about this figure is his face sculpt is not on point at all. I mean, if you guys just look at this right here, the biggest issue I have with it, the goggles are completely wrong. For the most part, he kind of wears a mask that covers... The rest of his face, you can kind of see it right there on the side of his cheek and underneath his chin. And then it usually kind of goes across his um, his eyes, kind of like your classic superhero mask. I mean, he does wear goggles, don't get me wrong, but they're not even the right style goggles. I mean, the one he wears, the one that's even on the box are oval. These things right here, not that good, man. Now he does come with one of his most important accessories. And this right here is a static saucer. This thing right here is what he rides on because he can manipulate magnetic fields. So he can ride on anything. He used to ride on like uh, freaking manhole covers and trash can lids back in the day. It was really cool. But this one right here is a little bit more up to date, a little bit more sophisticated. My only problem with this right here, and just in McFarlane toys especially, they only have one foot peg. It'd be nice if they put multiple ones, maybe on every different little textile. Like, it could blend in with the rest of it and wouldn't really hurt the posability, but... Long story short, though, it's just having the one peg kind of throws the balance off just a little bit on the figure. Virgil's primary offensive uh, power is his electricity. He can manipulate and distribute electricity very well. And these accessories right here do a good job mimicking the ability to do it, though. They're a little tricky to put on, but when the light hits it in the right way, man, it really pops and looks good. The DC Multiverse figures have 22 points of articulation, and this figure does have it, but it feels very limited. I'm going to go over it with you, okay? Now, the head does move from side to side, but it doesn't go that far, and when it does, it moves its head back, though. Barely goes front, barely goes back, I mean, that's the most you're going to get out with, though. The shoulders are really decent, though, for the most part. My only problem right here is the elbow doesn't really give you a whole lot of room. I mean, if he wants to throw a punch, he's only coming from here. Like, if he wants to kind of bring the lightning up top and then kind of drop it down on you, it's not going to get a whole lot of possibility with that, though. The hip is very limited, though. And the reason why that bothers me, though, is because when he rides his static saucer, he usually rides it like a freaking surfboard, man. So you got to kind of have that, like, uh, prone down pose where you're just about ready to catch, come out of the shoe of the wave and just looks freaking awesome. You're not going to get this with that figure. As far as legs are concerned, though, Knees bend really well. And that's where you're probably going to have to make up some possibility here. The weirdest thing I always find about McFarlane uh, toys is their toes. Like, I understand, like, he, a little bit is fine, but it doesn't need to go up that high. I mean, really, it just looks unnatural right here. It looks like he broke his foot to me. But, I don't know. That's probably the best you're going to get out of this figure for articulation.
for my final review, I really wanted a Static Shock to be from the animated series. So it's such a great show, and never saw any merchandise come out of it, no action figures at all. In fact, uh, they're selling for like crazy amounts of money. There was a figure that came out in 2004 from Subway, you know? And the crazy thing about that, though, is Phil Lamar, who voiced Static in the show, even said what canceled the show was the fact they had lack of merchandising. McFarlane Toys should have really, I don't know what reason why they couldn't do the anime show, because easily that was the biggest fan of it. I'll be any Static Shock fan. I mean, if you read the comics or whatnot, everybody goes back to that show, and it still it still holds up today. It freaking rocks. I mean, it's on Max right now. If you guys just want to watch it, if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. But for the detail of the new 52 Static Shock, and there wasn't a lot of comics for the new 52 version of Static Shock, is this. They got the uniform almost right. Well, I mean, almost right. That head scope that I complained about with the goggles does not work for him at all on this figure. It just takes away a lot of his expression. And even more so, the biggest thing, though, too, is he looks way cooler in the comic than he does in uh, action figure form. So, that being said, though, I'm still going to give it like an 8 out of 10. I would give it more points. So, I mean, it does work pretty well, but I don't know. It just kind of takes the expression out. And for the posability, though, I mean, this figure, I was wrong about the elbow. The elbow works just fine. I mess with a lot more. It's a shoulder. Whenever he tries to go for like an overhand Superman punch... He's not going to have it there. Also, the hip movement does hinder the figure up a little bit, though. The head scope, another thing, too. I mean, it will eventually pose in a certain way. You just really, really got to fight it and just keep pushing it back when it wants to come the other way. That being said, though, it's not that great for posability, though. Uh, so I will have to give this figure a 7.75 out of 10. Go on, McFarlane. You guys can do better than that. And for the fun factor, Static Shock is easily one of my unsung heroes in the comic book world, though. He doesn't really get a long, kind of spanned out uh, comic releases anymore, but whatever they do put out usually is a quality product, though. As far as this figure is concerned, like I said before, this is the cheapest level of three I could find. But this one right here is going to fit at home with the rest of my uh, DC Multiverse figures, though, too. So whenever Static Shock has the time to come in and just... Uh, help out the Justice League or just whatever he wants to do, man. He's always got a home. That being said, though, the fun factor will still be there because of the character itself. For this figure, though, I'm going to have to put this one at an 8.25 out of 10, though. That's pretty respectable. Even with all the other flaws, still a decent figure. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, this was a lot of fun to do, though, for this video. I'm trying to do more history of uh, the action figures, uh, a little bit of backstory with the go. So that's something I want to do moving forward. Uh, if you guys like to go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys saw of the video. Always leave a like and comment and subscribe if you really want to. Until then, guys, love y'all and take care of each other, all right?